When does a quantum system begin to behave classically? Is it when the system is large? When it's measured? When it's noisy? All of these are, to certain extents, true. However, this transition is not necessarily well defined, with behaviours from both the quantum wave interference picture and the classical billiard ball model coexisting. To experimentally investigate the effect of phase noise, we turn to an easily accessible quantum system, the Bose-Einstein condensate, or BEC. The BEC is an atomic system where, at sufficiently low temperatures, bosonic stimulation means the trapped atoms avalanche into the lowest energy level. Our all-optical laser and evaporative cooling system provides us with a single clean wave function of 20,000 rubidium-87 atoms with which to experiment upon. We make use of a well-known quantum chaotic system to explore the effect of noise. The delta case rotor represents a rotating pendulum subject to a pulse gravitational field. For sufficiently large kick strength, this is classically chaotic. In a quantum context, the picture of different closely spaced initial conditions exponentially diverging from one another in phase space doesn't hold. Instead, two uniquely quantum behaviours emerge, quantum resonances and dynamical localization. By investigating these behaviours, we can gain insight into how quantum or classical our system is. The delta kick rotor is mimicked by two pulsed counter-propagating laser beams detuned from the atomic resonance. These interfere, subjecting the atoms to a pulse sinusoidal phase grating, the equivalent Hamiltonian of the rotating pendulum. The beams are controlled with acoustic optic modulators, which control the timing and the phase of each beam. We introduce phase noise by sinusoidally modulating the phase of one of the beams. The ratio of the modulation frequency to the kicking frequency determines the resulting behavior. If the ratio is rational, periodic phase shifts result. This can have dramatic consequences on the energy transferred to the system. We image the momentum distribution by time of flight to monitor the transferred energy. If the phase changes, for example, by pi every kick, then the quantum resonance can be transformed into an anti-resonance, as each kick will undo the effect of the previous one. We find resonances at all rational multiples of the kick frequency. On the other hand, if two frequencies are incommensurate, the phase will be pseudo-random. This allows us access to a reproducible noise pattern. We need multiple repeats of a single experiment, and utilizing reproducible phase noise ensures that we don't need to worry about the information being obscured by changing realizations. We find the phase noise to have interesting effects. We use numerical simulations to investigate the long-time behavior. The quantum resonance turns out to be surprisingly resilient to the noise, with the resonance peak persisting even when the modulation amplitude is greater than pi. On the other hand, dynamical localization, which is the other key quantum indicator, is lost with even small modulation amplitudes. This is good evidence that the quantum to classical transition is highly non-trivial. Thanks for watching. From the Quantum Information and Quantum Motion Laboratory at the University of Auckland, this is Donald White, Samuel Ruddle, and Martin Hocheland.